Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Jose Mas, CEO of Mas Tech, and our esteemed panel. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. So I'd like to just give a quick overview on the theme of our panel, which I think is uh, very fascinating and interesting. It's called Using Sports to Strengthen Youth Engagement. And the description is, in a rapidly changing world, youth engagement is more important than ever. The Western Hemisphere is facing dramatic political, economic, and societal shifts that will have long-standing effects on the region. As nations look for innovative ways to engage younger generations, one avenue stands out, sports. People of all ages and backgrounds can engage through sports and use their platforms as athletes to enact positive change. This session will reflect on the unifying power of sports in the Americas and hear from the student athlete leaders on the importance of sports in creating social impact. So I hate to break it to you, but I'm not a famous athlete or a professional <laughs> athlete. I didn't get to live my dreams in that world. But in my real life, I'm the CEO of a company called Mostec, which is one of the largest infrastructure construction companies in the US. We're a Fortune 500 company, founded here in Miami by, by my family. Today, we're, we're publicly traded. We're very large. But to be honest, probably one of the highlights of my life was being able to bring a soccer team to Miami. So I'm one of the owners. Um, thank you. I'm one of the owners of the Inter-Miami soccer team, uh, with, along with my brother and with somebody you might have heard of. His name is David Beckham. And the three of us brought soccer to Miami, and it's been fascinating. And this panel means a lot to me because I think one of the things that we're trying to do as a sport is really engage kids at a very young age, introduce them to soccer in a, in a, in a level that's free, right, to help them engage and, and really be able to carry out their, their, their professional ambitions of being a professional soccer player. So very excited to be in that realm. And I'm probably even more excited. I'm a trustee at the University of Miami. I, I was a student here. I came here. I graduated from here. It means a lot to me. And today we're represented by four of our very own student athletes. These are individuals who not only got their degrees here or are in the process of getting their degrees here, but dedicated an enormous amount of time to their individual sports. And unlike so many other places in the Americas, in the United States, college sports is so important to you know, our, our everyday living. College sports are incredibly popular here, and thus our athletes are incredibly popular. And they probably have a, a mechanism and a role that you know, many others in the region may not, but through their voices, they have so much power to effectuate change. So one of the things that I like each of, each of our panelist members to do is introduce themselves and talk a little bit about what sports meant to them in being able to get to where they are today. So go for it. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Debbie Ajogbe, and I um, actually have just graduated from the University of Miami with a degree in mechanical engineering, uh, actually two. Uh, bachelor's and master's, and I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and also I was a part of the um, University of Miami track and field team, and I participated on um, the field event side. I threw shot put, discus, and hammer. So definitely one of my favorite things, and I've been doing it ever since I was 10 years old. So uh, sports have definitely been the thing that got me out of my shell. I was a really nerdy elementary school kid, like my my uh, siblings always made fun of me because they're like, just stick to books. You don't really have to play. You don't have to be like us. But um, I started middle school and went out for the track and field team, and the rest is history. It really just got me to meet people and be able to have courage in myself. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Carla Eriavets. I'm originally from Croatia, studying at University of Miami, entering my grad year. Uh, I just completed my undergrad in sports administration. And I'm about to enter a program for exercise physiology as my grad program. Uh, I'm currently a part of the women's basketball team, entering my fifth year and last year of eligibility. Um, I started playing sports a while back, back home in Croatia. I come from a very basketball-oriented family. Both my parents play basketball. So somehow I ended up playing basketball as well which is not really surprising. Um, 
sports, sports meant so much to me. First of all, coming to study in Miami is such a big deal. Coming to study to US from Europe, um, people look at you differently. People look at you like you, you made such, such a big accomplishment and were at such young age to be com competing basically professionally. So it made me to meet new people, find new, see new places, and I'm just very grateful for it. Hey everyone, my name is Lou Headley. Um, I've been here since 2019. I'm currently on the football team. I'm the current punter. Um, so yeah, this is going into my fourth year. I uh, completed my, uh, my major in sports administration and um, I'm on to liberal arts as my master's and I should graduate that by December, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, so yeah, f sport for me has been everything. Um, growing up in Australia, I played Australian rules football and it really got me uh, connected with, you know, other kids and created some sort of, you know, social realm for me. And uh, it really um, changed my life coming over here, um, especially. You know, I didn't graduate high school um, in Australia. I was working construction for a little bit. So I went down that path and thought that was me, you know, for the rest of my life. And then I found out what college football was. And, you know, I had to go to a junior college in San Francisco. Um, you know, get my grades up and then was fortunate enough to, to land a spot here in Miami and I've worked really hard to get to where I'm at. Um, but yeah, uh, sports really changed my life. Um, going from construction to, you know, reading books and getting degrees, it's, it's really unbelievable. So I'm very privileged to be at a spot like this and looking forward to what the future holds. So, how you doing? My name is Demetrius Jackson. I'm a former Kane. Um, born and raised in Overtown, community of Overtown. Um, I completed my bachelor's here, my master's here. Um, let me see, what, I really don't like to brag about myself, but um, <laughs> um, Ms. Jackson, I'm gonna just give a shout out to Ms. Jackson. You know, she helped transform a young man from Overtown. You know, she, <laughs> you know, she really helped me channel being here for five years. You know, I was here with Coach Golden, here with Coach Scott when he was the interim coach and here with Coach Mark Rick. So I had a multitude of coaches when I was here. And just Ms. Jackson, she helped me, you know, focus on really what I wanted to do. And um, that was community service. You know, I'm really big on community service. I love helping my community. And um, just Ms. Jackson, you know, that's enough about me, but Ms. Jackson, thank you, Ms. J. That's it about me, though, that's it. So I've got a question that I would love to hear your perspective on, you know, sports, Obviously, some of you are figures that kids see them, they get to know who you are. You've got a lot of fans of the university that watch you play. It gives you incredible access to people you probably wouldn't have access to. And with all that said, you're all incredibly young, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're really at the beginning of your lives, at the beginning of your careers. How do you feel that the, the, the time that's changed in the last couple of years from, from an activist perspective, with the amount of issues that have been happening, not just in the United States, but across the globe, how do you feel that, that that's changed your voice and your ability to participate in that and effectuate change and effectuate and make a difference? And, you know, I, I, you, we don't have to go in order. But, I mean, you, you, you lived in Croatia. Yeah. Right? You come from a very different perspective. You come from a country that, you know, has had, you know, its, its own set of issues over a long period of time. You come here, you see something totally different. How, how do you, and you've probably learned a lot in the U.S. relative to what, what, what this society is like versus not. So... Give us your perspective on that. Um, so first of all, as athletes, um, you have so much power th as in your voice. Whatever you say gets hurt twice, then a regular person comes and says, you really have to be careful. What are you talking about? Who are you talking to? And it's really important to see that those social issues and to really understand that your voice me means so much. And so, some people can't don't have that voice to make it hurt, but we do, especially here at the University of Miami, our voice is really valued. Everything that we say gets heard across all, all campus. And coming from Croatia is just, sport has never been such a big thing. Um, athletes never had that big of a role. So for me, it was really interesting and really fulfilling to see how big of an impact I can have, at, especially at such a young age and how much I can help some other people that might not be able to say something and get their opinion on. I can say some stuff for them and make sure everybody else is heard from our mouths. Debbie? 
Um, just kind of thinking about um, my voice and growing up and being an athlete, I have always been the type of person to ask questions. So I'm the person that everyone's like, hey, like, can you ask the teacher to do this? Or like, can you ask some da 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 da? So I'm very used to being like, oh, I think this is an issue. Like, let's talk about it. But what I didn't realize that was as a student athlete, not only was I talking for myself as a person, but I was also talking for all athletes in a, in a way where it's like, I'm not only just a voice in myself, because sometimes it's like, yeah, I can advocate for myself, but it was realizing that I have the ability to advocate for others as well. And how can I do that? And not only as student athletes, it's like, I'm able to advocate for black women, black people, and just this whole realm of places where just being myself is activism enough, where it's like, I exist in this space. And as a student athlete, I, me doing what I want to do and do, doing all the things that make me happy is enough activism for someone else just through representation can see like, oh, wow, Debbie's doing this. I want to be like Debbie. And it kind of just like makes you think about how you kind of show up in the world and how you want to impact people's lives. Um, yeah, I think as athletes, um, our voice is super important. I think the last three years have been pretty crazy throughout sports. I think a lot of political issues kind of drifted through sports and you know, a lot of our you know, big time programs had to show their support to whatever it was. And I feel we really came together um, team by team, university by university. I think University of Miami, um, you know, we we're really strong through all um, you know, the political issues that we faced over the past three years. Um, and yeah, just going off what these two said, I think our voice is a lot louder than others. I think. You know, we do a lot of work here at community, um, with community service through student athlete development here. Um, they really help the student athletes get into the community and be that voice to, you know, the younger, the younger generation that needs to come up and fill our steps. So I think, you know, our voice going around is super important. And uh, yeah, Miami do a great job. And I'm, like I said, I'm very privileged to be a part of it. Hmm. When you say my voice, that's one of the main reasons I stayed here to go to University of Miami. You know, I could have went to any college I wanted to. I stay here to help my mom raise my brothers um, because I know what it's like, you know, two young boys raised by a single mom that's tough by herself. And um, just like you guys, you know, you, I think you caught it at the right end with everything going on. Because I remember when I was going into my red shirt junior year, an opportunity came to ask, are you going to kneel? What are we going to do? And to be honest with you, because I was so used to doing stuff in the community, that was my way of giving back. That was my way of creating change. So I didn't have to do all the other parts. You know, that was my way of being an activist and especially coming from over town, you know. Um, it's changing now, but a lot of, you know, the young people there, they're lost. And I think, you know, you know, community service, it starts at home, charity starts at home. So just being able to catch that Metro Rail and go to, you know, go to over town and them little boys and little girls see me walking through the community after just seeing me play on a Friday or Saturday night, hey, Demetrius Jackson, I can touch you, you're right here. So I just think that goes a long way. And, um, you know, so we do have a voice, it's just how you use it, you know, whether it's taking a knee, whether it's doing community service, whether it's supporting the LGBTQ community, whether it's supporting Black Lives Matter, whatever it is, whether it's supporting, you know, the people of Cuba, people of Haiti, whatever it is, you know, you have a voice. So I just think it's on you how you channel it and how you use it. So Demetrius, today you're a public school teacher, mm -hmm. high school football coach, homegrown from Overtown. When you think about sports in general, how can we better use sports to give the kids in Overtown, specifically where you're from, a better avenue to have a better life ultimately? How, how, do, you, how do you think sports can bridge that gap? You know, I, I think it bridges it with, with, with not putting too much pressure on these kids. You know, hey, you have the whole household depending on you to make it. If you don't make it, that's it, you know, and I think um, the things I learned here, the things I took with me, that's why I started my own sports agency because I, I wanted to develop athletes and develop, start them young, develop them so, hey, I can start a business I, if sports don't work out. I can make all those connections that I made, all those networking, all those people I've met, those leadership skills on the field, on the court, whatever it is, uh, track and field, whatever it is, and just tone that, you know, to, um, to life after sports because sports come to an end. It comes to the end, it comes to the end. 
you know, very fast. I entered this place when I was 19. I left out of here at 25 and I'm 27 now. Never would have thought it goes by, you know, so fast. But I think just people like us going back to the communities, educating them. Um, like you said, sports administration, right? Yes, sir. I wish I majored in sports administration, you know, <laughs> because I would have got my thing started right after high school, right after college instead of three or four years later. And things like that, entrepreneurship, just those different avenues. So when I leave college, especially with NIL deals now, financial literacy should be big. There's no way an athlete should leave college broke. You know, <laughs> coming up from small, you should, there's no way you should leave college broke. You should leave college with five or 10 years of savings and probably having your own business. That's good. Lou, you're international, you're a father as well. How do you view what you can do back in your home country? Like, what, what have the lessons learned here helped you to take back to bring to kids that are out there potentially looking to advance their sports careers? Yeah, I think um, coming over, um, you know, college sports isn't really under the magnifying glass in Australia, so not many people really know about it. So I think now there's a few um, internationals from everywhere, but um, especially Australia, you kind of see them making the NFL, making the pros, and then everyone's like, you know, how do you, how do you get to that point? And now college football, college basketball, and all the other college sports, um, you know, people over there are seeing that, you know, you don't have to um, just get told what to do from coming out of school in Australia. You can kind of branch off and there's a, there's a whole world out there to go explore and different avenues. And if you're good at something, you can get scholarships, not just from sports, but you know, if you're smart, you can get you know, academic scholarships also. So I think as me as an example, coming from construction, um, you know, I did that for about eight years. So I completely um, you know, did a 360 and changed my life around through sports, um, just believing in myself. And I think you know, if other people see kind of you know, my story and how I got to this position where I am, I think um, you know, it leads, I've already had a, you know, a few people um, come over to college because they seen what I was doing. So that's a great feeling seeing other people I grew up around, they seen what I did. Um, and now there are over other sports, um, other colleges in America doing the same thing. So I think that, you know, the impact of just people seeing what you're doing and seeing that it is possible to do whatever you put your mind, mind to, I think that's, you know, that's a start and, um, you know, keep growing off that. That's great. And as a college football fan, I'm glad you're back. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so, Carla, quick question. Uh, understand you played for the FIBA Women's Eurobasket uh, team uh, over the summer. Obviously, the Ukrainian situation changing so fast at the same time. Can you talk about that experience and, and how it impacted you and some of the things you were doing to try to help relative to that? Um, when I first found out about things going on in Ukraine, um, I don't know how, how much people know. Croatia is not that far. There is two countries in between Ukraine and Croatia. And first when I thought, when I thought about it, I was here in Miami, we were actually I had a road trip at Virginia Tech last year, getting ready for a game. And that morning I woke up and it just really hit home. Um, my dad and my brother were back home. I got really scared. I didn't know what, what was gonna happen about it. Um, then I called there, Every, everything was great. The situation stayed where it is, but um, the chaos, everything, everything around it and the whole country was going crazy and people, I don't know um, how to explain it. It's just, you can't really explain how people back there felt. It was such a big fear. Um, I, heard, I heard this story, I was home a month ago and um, one of our nation leaders um, sent, sent some stuff to Ukraine, like weapons or something and two days after, uh, a drone fell in my hometown. So it's just, even though you're not that close, you're really not that far. And that situation just really hits home. It really, it's a really hard thing to talk about, especially because of the, all of the issues. I mean, Russians don't really get to play any sports on a European, on a world level right now because of it. And I think it's a big conversation to have and it's, really important to talk about it but I think we're moving in the right direction there are more conversations going on more people knowing about it there was a whole whole talks that I was listening to people talking about it here in the US which 
made me feel more comfortable about people knowing about the situation back there. So just being home this summer, it was just reassuring, making sure my family is good, that I can help in my community do any way I can, and just trying to make it day by day, not think about too much in the future. Debbie, for you, um, how did your experience as a woman of color afford you a unique position to represent other women of color and give them great greater visibility on social issues? I would say that I'm used to being the only one in the room. And just being like historically in STEM, oh. in sports, it's, it's been something that I've been used to. But then coming to the University of Miami and seeing that I'm not the only woman of color, I'm not the only black woman on a team or in a classroom, really made me feel like, okay, like now I can start making community. And now I can start using the people around me to like lift me up so it doesn't feel like I need to make sure everything is right and that I look perfect as this kind of, um, I would say image of black women in sports or black women in STEM. Now it's about how do I create and become part of this community where as a black woman, I'm able to speak up, but speak up with my friends and speak up with my other mentors where I'm using the resources around me to be able to not only see change, but be effective in how that change is being um, applied in like different, in different situations. So I think one of, the, one of the biggest things that I've learned at UM is that not only should you lean on your resources, is that you don't know who's on your side until you start talking to people. And then you can basically build a network of people who can help you be able to get these issues out to people and talk about all the disparities that are, um, that are in STEM and sports regarding like women of color and things like that. So that's the one thing that I've really learned is to lean on others. Demetrius, you're the elder statesman in this group. If you could go back to your 15-year-old version of yourself, what would, you, what would you love to have known then that you didn't? Um, probably would have played football quicker. Because, you know, I didn't play, I, play, I, I, didn't, I only played one year of football in high school. I come from a, a heavy football family. Um, and just in one year, I was able to do the things. And I think, I, because I love sports, I really wasn't able to reach my peak how I wanted to because I got hurt. You know, I got hurt here at the University of Miami. And I think, you know, just that, other than that, I wouldn't change a thing about, you know, what I knew at 15, you know, because I had the mind of a child. You know, I was innocent, having fun, you know, just enjoying things, not a, a care in the world. But from a sports aspect, I just would have wished I probably would have played football earlier, you know, because I fell in love with the game. And I fell in love with the things that came along with it, the people, that, the good people, you know, that came along with it and the lessons that came along with it. Lou, anything? Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, when I was young, I think if I could go back, I'd tell myself to, you know, um, you know, have bigger dreams. I think from a young age, I was going through high school and, you know, my brother, my parents didn't go to university and, you know, everyone I surrounded myself with kind of just accepted, you know, the construction, get a, you know, get a job that you're not really interested in. Um, but yeah, if I could go back, I'd definitely tell myself to, you know, believe in myself um, a lot more. You know, study harder, go to university, it's definitely possible. And yeah, it took me a few years after, after realizing it, but I'm very happy, you know, it came around. Carla, before coming here, what would you tell yourself? Before coming to Miami? Before, yeah. Um, you're not that old, so 15 doesn't sound that old. <laughs> you're right, but. Um, I, don't, I don't think I would change anything. Um, I was very fortunate to be raised by two parents that were really supportive. Um, that let me do whatever I wanted to do, that let me explore every option I had. I used to play volleyball before I started basketball. I was very fortunate to be around people like that that allowed me to seek and find what my dreams are, to see what I find my happiness in. And like my mom gave me this lesson one day and she just told me, chase your dreams. No matter where you are, no matter who you're surrounded with, make sure 
you chase what you want in life and make sure you're happy doing it. And that is the lesson I will carry with me forever, doing everything I do. Beautiful. Debbie? Um, I would definitely tell 15-year-old me to have more fun because I was definitely the planner. Like I had everything like to a T, like I had a five-year plan like type thing at <laughs> 15. So I definitely would go back and say like, hey, like it is okay to be a kid. It is okay to have fun and go out with friends and not be so serious about school because it's like there's, you know, caring about school and doing well. And then there was me. So just, <laughs> I was doing a lot. <laughs> so I would definitely go back and just let myself enjoy being 15, enjoy being on teams and enjoy being in classes and stuff like that and not worry too much about the future because I, I think I did pretty well for myself. Well, I can tell you that I'm incredibly proud of all of you. I think you. sitting here listening to, I'm a little bit older, but listening to the youth and, and the energy you guys have and the accomplishment and the drive that you have. And I think some of that came and was instilled in sports, right? Is mm -hmm. your coaches and your teachers that really pushed you. But you're incredible examples of what this university stands for. You're, you're, you're part of this brand. You're going to be part of this brand forever. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you're here today. I'm so happy you chose to come to the University of Miami and such great examples of the university. So thank you. Yeah. Thank and I you. think with that, we're out of time. So thank you very much. <laughs> I can go back this way, right? Yeah. Yeah.